One of my absolute favorite parts of our Sundance interview was how highly the two of you spoke about each other. So now that we can get into specifics, what is one thing the other did on set as a scene partner that really made this collaboration special? Ooh, I have mm. something. Um, okay. And it wasn't necessarily in the scene. Um, right at the beginning of production, I think it was like a couple of days of pre-production, we were shooting the journey that they take from the detention center to the house. And we were in a minibus like all day, <laughs> just driving around. And there's this shot of the, the two characters holding hands. Rumi was so generous in sharing something that was personal to her about how she met her husband, you know, and how, and just sharing that story. Well, I mean, I've loved Rumi for ages. So we would be wrong for me to say that I fell in love with her then. But um, her being that vulnerable with me really helped me sort of connect with her and then Bol connecting with Real. So it was just about Wumi being open, generous and sharing um, her life and being open and free with me and vulnerable with me that I think set us off on an excellent journey for the rest of the shoot. Yeah, I feel like the same. I feel like you. I was going to say like the the openness and the like, generosity of spirit like we really bonded as like you know brother and sister on that and on that job and like can, and has continued and I feel like um yeah that just that openness that you know lying somewhat lying on someone's lap is not an easy thing to do when you don't know a person it's just not mm -hmm. and um we were able to find that physical vocabulary between us just because we had opened up to each other and and been and shared have to ask you about working with Remy too. And specifically, I love hearing about what a director's tell is behind the monitor when they're really loving a take. And I'm really curious about him because he seems so chill and calm. So what can you see him doing behind the monitor when you know he's really digging your performance? No, I don't know. I think I was beating myself up so much trying to give him exactly what he wanted that I was like too in the scene to ever see him out the corner of my eye enjoying it. But um, Wumi, do you have anything? You know, it's really interesting because he doesn't stop until he gets it. So, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you're not there yet until he goes, I think we got it. He just says, I think we got yeah. it. And then we move on. And then that's when, you know, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Some spoilers now. I am always so eager to hear more about lore and legends. So did you two do any extra research into the Apeth or just witchcraft in general among the Dinka? You know, that scene, I don't know if this ruins the magic, but that scene was actually a reshoot. So we did mm -hmm. that a whole year later. And um, sorry, is that, is that, does that ruin the magic? <laughs> no, <laughs> like if, if anything, I think it's better to kind of demystify the negative connotation of a reshoot. Like sometimes mm -hmm. that yeah, stuff right. needs to happen for the better. When I read that scene, I just was just, I was just reading it because I didn't really understand why we needed it. And then, so that was more, and then it was actually in the playing of it that I realized, oh, mm. I get it. But so it was kind of a, it was more like an osmosis thing. I didn't really understand it until we were in the scene. I didn't understand the mm -hmm. true n need of that scene until we were there. They have the Apeth speech. And there's one point in that conversation where Bull snaps at Rial. And mm -hmm. I was wondering, Chopin, what, what, is, what does he say to her? Because I think that's one of the very few moments in the movie where we don't get an exact translation. Sure, yeah. Taj is what is the actual word that he said. And I think in Dinka, it means remember. enough. <laughs> I drilled it so many times. <laughs> I'll never forget. You, but he's, you he, he translates that. himself. I think is which is why it's not um, subtitled because it comes out in Dinka, That's fair. and he's been trying to leave that out. Uh, he's trying to remove that from himself because he wants to be able to speak English in a way that oh my goodness, reminds me of something that my parents told me once. But he wants to be able to speak English in a way that will make him assimilate and acceptable to the white people around him, so he doesn't speak his mother tongue anymore. And he's so frustrated in that moment that he says it and then almost quickly while still furious translates himself back into English because that's the language he wants to communicate in um but yeah I think that's why it wasn't subtitled 
It's such a searing moment. And I could feel it in your reaction to that with me. That scene just crushes me every time. Actually, here's a scene with a little more, I guess I would say a little more levity. Wimmy, I want to know about your performance during the scene where the caseworkers come in and Bull almost convinces them to, to leave you guys alone. And then Rial steps in and she says, well, what about the witch? What is the motivating factor behind her kind of blowing up his spot in a sense? Is it purely revenge? And can you feel that light tinge of comedy shining through while you're on set? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that's one of the things I love about Rial is that she does have like comedy, little moments of like just lightness. Um, even when he's having his nightmare at the beginning, she knows he's not dreaming about the wedding. And you know, like, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I think for her, her motivation is I want to go home. I am going home. I'm gonna let these people know the truth because I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give you what, you like, I'm not gonna perpetuate this nonsense. Like, let's go home. Let's get our girl mm. back. Let's go home. And um, they're gonna look at us, think we're crazy and send us home. <laughs> it, it's one of my favorite sequences in the movie among many others, but Chopin, for you, I'll go with this specific scene. So the, the moment where Bull decides to take Nyanyak, because there are, some, there are some shots in that that let us just sit with you without any dialogue, actually processing and making that decision. So in order to prepare mm -hmm. for a scene like that, what kind of conversations do you have to have with Remy to really solidify where his mind is at when he makes that choice? I don't know that we really had a discussion about that moment, but the freneticism of what's going on around like I thought the supporting artists in that scene did an incredible job of just squeezing us against this bus and reacting to the gunfire when it happened, that it's it, it's calculated and it's not. I think that's one of the themes of the, of the film. It's like, what do you do when you're trying to survive, when you're acting on instinct? He knows that maybe if he has this child, he'll gain access to the bus. But I don't think he, he obviously doesn't think further down the line because carrying this child across the sea into into safety i was definitely never a part of that plan in that moment so i think um super grateful to remy and yo for capturing that because i don't think we really spoke about it beforehand it is uh it's mighty powerful as is the whole film you guys know how i feel about this one and i'm so glad people are getting to see it now huge yeah. congratulations thank, thank you, you so much. much see you Love guys soon to chat to you again yeah so you good do to see you